Randy McKee here at Soccer 605. We're here to do a tournament wrap-up. I have Coach Brock Thompson with me again today. Thanks, Coach, for being with us. Sure, appreciate it. Well, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, kind of turned out a little bit like a lot of people expected. A lot of a lot of play in the midfield, but they did get the ball end-to-end -end at certain times during the game. Yeah, they, they did, and typically, you know, the Sunday game is always the tough one on the weekend. Uh, and, and come tournament time, the emotions of a, of a Friday night semifinal win, you, you know, you've got to recover emotionally and, and physically. And I think... Uh, you know that that you know certainly was evident that there was some tired and fatigued play at times, uh, but certainly some quality play, especially in midfield and especially you know on the counterattacks for both teams. You know, uh, I was uh, um, expecting uh, a lot of pressure on Rachel Good today from Oakland, and just because she played just an, out of her mind the other night, and uh, sure enough, they they didn't give her a breath of fresh air, but she she still shook loose a couple times. Yeah, she's she's a great player, dynamic player. Uh, you know, for, for me, the story of the game was Oakland's midfield and their ability, not not just attacking-wise, but their ability to get so many numbers in there. Um, and, you know, on a Friday, Fort Wayne's dynamic players, if they had to beat one player to really cause chaos. And, you know, Oakland put themselves in positions where they had to beat two or three uh, just to try to get a service off. And, and I think that really limited the types of chances that Fort Wayne was able to create. Um, and certainly, you know, it, it really made it hard for Fort Wayne to get into the attacking third and create the kinds of chances they were able to create on Friday night. But you're right, they're, they're a team that's got some fan, fantastic attacking players um, and some youthful ones as well. You know, uh, early in the game, it, you know, the, 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 within the first six, seven minutes, you know, each team had a good chance. But, you know, Fort Wayne had a great chance. Keep, had the keeper 1v1 and that keeper came up big on that save. Huge save. Huge save, and you know, and it, it's we've both been around soccer long enough to know that the first goal, first goal changes the game drastically, and it may have very well been a different different game had that goal gone in, um, you know, and that's but that's the nature of it, and you know, she, Shannon Coley has played very very well. She's an explosive goalkeeper and, and quick off her line, and uh, even today I think showed that she played with a lot of confidence in her presence and her organization and you know I think a little bit of that's that she's been in those situations before and I, Fort Wayne's goalkeeper is a freshman very talented uh, but you could just see a little bit of nervousness amongst her um, versus the veteran on the other end both probably equal in, in ability uh, but experience pays dividends. Nothing, nothing like having been there before a time or two or fifty like the, like those veterans have. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, we, uh, there are a lot of people that picked Oakland. They came in as top seed. Fort Wayne, I thought, I thought played uh, very well all weekend. You know, their their last contest they won, and you know, like uh, Coach O'Shea before the match uh, said, you know, they Oakland was leading them two nil at halftime uh, last game, and they just fought and fought and fought and came back. But uh, they, you know, they just didn't have the, quite the horses today to do that. Yeah, I, I would agree with that, and you know, and I think some of it goes back to the, the experience thing. This is their first time here, and they're a fantastic team, and uh, really impressed with them. But in the same sense, it's 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 a different gamut to get there for the first time and, and do that. And um, you know, and Margaret from IPFW's got got a wonderful program going there, and I'm sure they'll you know they'll be here many more times to play in the conference tournament for sure. Um, Oakland is just one of those teams that they just have a lot a lot of solid players and. Um, you know, and, and are able to really kind of manage games pretty well and, and stay within themselves. Well, um, for all but Oakland now, the, the season's over in the conference. Uh, you know, I, I kind of offhandedly asked Coach Soren if, if she was going to be re out on the recruiting trip tomorrow. She said, well, I'm still going to be traveling home, which means as soon as she gets home, she's probably going to get in a car yeah. and head out. Uh, and I suppose uh, you and Coach Wiedemeyer are in the same boat here at, at South Coast State. Yeah, you know, we go through a little bit of a process. Uh, we do kind of year-end meetings with players, uh, be able to give them some real feedback, uh, some goals to work on, things like that. A couple of team meetings. Um, but yeah, the recruiting calendar is coming up, filling fairly fast. Uh, I'll be down in Kansas City in a couple weeks, uh, probably out in the Final Four Showcase in San Diego, uh, first weekend in December. And, um, you know, we're, we're lined with visits in between uh, of players. And, you know, it, it, I, would, I wouldn't say recruiting ever gets put on the back burner, but during the season, obviously, our focus is on our team and players and, and doing that. And so we can never quite do as much as we would like to during the months of September and October. So uh, we certainly have a lot of phone calls and emails and evaluations to get done. Well, uh, we uh, want to thank you, Coach uh, Thompson, you and, and Coach Wiedemeyer, for all the access you've given us this uh, year. And 
Uh, we look forward to continuing uh, bringing South Dakota State soccer to our viewers here in, in South Dakota. We, uh, you know, we're very happy early in the season to get down and take a look at USD's operation, and and you folks have done such a great job uh, for us and for the state. Uh, we just can't thank you enough. Sure, and and I'll, and I'll echo that, Randy. What you guys are doing for soccer in South Dakota. Uh, it's fantastic. It, it's helped growing the sport. It's helped developing the sport. It's helped showcasing the sport. All of those things are, are really essential, essential pieces um, to have high level, high level, high level game here. And so, um, you know, we try to do our part. I know, I know you guys are trying to do your part, and uh, and it's just kind of neat to see the strides that come along with that. Well, you know, if, if you love soccer, you got to be you got to be on board with me and Coach Thompson. And back there behind the camera, uh, Carol, Carol McKee, who uh, stood here all afternoon and hold an, uh, held an umbrella over the camera so he could uh, bring the game to you. So, uh, Coach, uh, thanks again for uh, all, all uh, the time you've given us, and uh, we sure look forward to finding you out on the soccer field here in the very near future. Awesome. Thanks.